Hey guys, Briar Rabbit here, and today I wanted to talk about a comment. Actually, I want to talk about a question that was posed in the comment section of my last video. So it was actually posed by GetPunk99. If you guys don't know GetPunk99, he's been a longtime subscriber on this channel. I've always seen him in the comments section, but he also has his own channel. He does a lot of Call of Duty sniping montages, and what I like about him is he really, he really uses some cool special effects, uh, some visual effects that make the videos really fun to watch, as well as picking some really cool music. Uh, it actually really gets me amped to play Call of Duty when I watch his video. So I, I'm going to link him down in the description of this video, so definitely click Click that link and check out GetPunk99's channel. But back to his actual question. His question was, do you think it is worth getting both consoles or picking just one? And he's talking about the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One here. And I thought it was a pretty valid question. I actually wrote about a paragraph and a half before I said, you know what? It's going to be easier for me to just make a video about this than answering this with the article that I'm now writing. <laughs> so I actually thought, you know, and I'm sure there are other people wondering the same question. And my answer right off the bat is no, I don't think it's worth getting both consoles right now. I think there are a few reasons that it doesn't make sense right at the launch to be buying uh, both consoles. The first reason is, is that there are almost always hardware issues at launch. Uh, when you're a early adopter, you often get consoles or any any manufactured product that isn't quite as good as what the people are getting six months or a year down the road. Uh, you pay a high premium for it because you haven't you haven't seen it get price cuts or anything like that. But there are often revisions to hardware uh, based on reliability and heat and you know a number of factors that you'll get. They won't actually talk about. Uh, the, you know, like Microsoft might not talk about, they might change the heat sink a little bit in the Xbox One. Or PlayStation might add another little uh, rubber stopper to the bottom of the PlayStation 4 so that it doesn't slide around. Stuff like that, you know, they don't really talk about, but it happens over the course of the hardware. Not to mention the major revisions, like, uh, you know, like the PlayStation 3 Slim or the PlayStation 3 Slim Part 2 or the Xbox One Slim, you know, or the Xbox 360 Slim. You know, these revisions happen, you know, over the course of a few years, and price cuts will happen as well. Now, I can't tell you that they're gonna happen by next Christmas, they probably won't, unless one of the companies really has a major issue selling the products, but it's definitely worth waiting for if you already have one of the other consoles. So let's say you're a huge Killzone fan, you like playing Call of Duty, and you really like playing the Uncharted games that Sony puts out by, I think Naughty Dog makes those. Well then the PlayStation 4 is perfect for you. You know, and you can wait to see what the Xbox One gets for exclusives that aren't coming out for PS4 that are really going to appeal to you and make the Xbox One earn that money. You know, instead of just blindly buying both consoles like I did, uh, expecting that, you know, there'll be software on both of them, I think it's a wiser decision to actually wait for the software to be released and actually see how good this software is going to be and uh, if it's actually worth your money. Now... The, the side effect of that is, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I decide, okay, the PlayStation 4 is right for me because I really want to play Killzone, I really want to play Call of Duty, and I really want to play uh, Uncharted 4. But all my friends start playing Titanfall, and I really want to play it. Well, then you've had you know four or five months to save up for the next the next console. If you were already planning on buying both consoles, you really didn't lose anything here. You know, you still have that money that you saved, but uh, you had a little extra time to just devote your time to the games on the PS4. So to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy both consoles at launch. In fact, it doesn't, it's not a good idea in my opinion. You know, I, I know that I did it, so I'm speaking from a place of, you know, some kind of, you know, it's, it's a bit contradictory for me to say that. Uh, but really, I bought it because I have a YouTube channel, and I really wanted to uh, be able to play the newest games with the newest graphics on the newest consoles on the YouTube channel. I thought that would be really successful for the YouTube channel, and it has been. So it ended up being a good decision for me personally, but that's not really the most user's you know, goal. Is Most users just want to play the games that look awesome, and I think that one console right now, and it can be either console, is really going to be all you need. 
Now, maybe when March rolls around and Titanfall comes out and you already have a Sony PlayStation 4, you really want an Xbox One, that's great. You'll have more time to save money. You won't have to stand in line at midnight and you'll get a more mature platform. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Is it worth buying both consoles now or should you wait until they mature a little bit? That's going to do it for this commentary. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.